this KG number retirement has certain people feeling certain types of ways. Like I love KG, one of my favorite uh, subjects of recent memory for sure. Uh, change the culture of this team. And obviously they don't hang banner 17 without KG and without Ray Allen, without Paul Pierce, without James Posey and everybody on that team contributing. But a lot of the big question is, is Kevin Garnett's number worthy of retirement considering the history of the Boston Celtics, Gary Washburn? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, if, if you, in comparison to some of the other guys that have been retired. Yeah. Well, that's what it is, right? It's all relative. Like I kind of relate, I kind of relate. I kind of relate it, but it's it's not. I hope this isn't blasphemy. It's kind of a Dennis Johnson where he played, you know, like he he had he played somewhere else. His best years, like Dennis Johnson, was a lockdown defender with Phoenix and Seattle. Like he won a championship in Seattle. He was a lockdown elite point guard in Seattle. He comes to Boston a little older and then leads them to the, um, you know, championships, you know, the two championships. Was he, I don't know if he was, was he on the 81 team? Or was that? Hmm. Oh. I think it's two. I think it's two. Yeah. I think 84 yeah. and 86, because I think it was Nate Archibald was obviously was, was the kind of elite guard in the 81 team. So here comes DJ. And I just think he got his number retired and God bless him. Uh, you know, one championship with Boston joined them in 83, 84. Okay. So 80, 84 and 86. 86. Was he not on the team in 86? I thought he was on the team in 86. Yeah, he was on the team in 86. Okay. So it should be two then. Oh, yeah. you know what? I take it back. I was looking at his all star seasons. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So he wins yeah. two titles. So I, I kind of related to that. Like he wasn't there 12, 13 years. He was there like seven, I want to say, seven or eight. And I don't have a problem with KG getting his number retired uh, because he changed the entire culture of the franchise. Uh, I, I'm not a big, you know, I've written about this in the past. You can go back and, and look at some of the guys, Bill Sharman mm. and Frank Lasky and, uh, you know, some of the guys who have their numbers retired. And, it, is it, it, and especially in this generation where, we don't remember these players. We never saw them play. The YouTube video is grainy. Um, they're, <laughs> they're wearing low top chucks. It, it's, it's, it denigrates their accomplishments at the time. Um, so I don't want to speak out against, well, they should, you know, all those guys from the 60s, except Russell and Kuzi, they should just re reinstate their numbers. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to say that. I can't say how valuable a player Casey Jones was, Sam Jones was. Um, and yeah, they took cool numbers. You know, there's no cool numbers anymore. 21's taken, <laughs> 22's retired, 23's retired, 24's retired, 25's retired. Um, you know, 33's retired, 34's retired, 32's retired, like mm -hmm. 31's retired, like 10's retired, 15's retired, 14's retired. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, now five's retired, like you just. It is what it is. I mean, look, look no further than Jason Tatum. Dude's got to be number zero. Yeah. yeah. So zero, and that's going to be if he, you know, that's going to be the tie. Like, it's going to be, you know, where guys are wearing football numbers out there. <laughs> and it is what it is. I, you know, do I think they put pull, pull the trigger a little too quickly in the 60s on retiring all these guys' numbers? You know, did they know that the future, that did they see that Cowens and Havlicek, and JoJo White and all those guys are coming. Um, you know, probably no, because I mean, you can't even wear like 14 through 14, 14 through 19 are all retired. It's crazy. Hmm. Like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 are all retired. 20 isn't, but 21 through 25 is retired. Like it's, it is what it is. It's funny, but it, it was like you, you have, the preeminent franchise of the 60s, a lot of those guys deserved it at that particular time. You can't take it back. Yeah. Uh, right. Do I think exactly. Barnett, I think they'll be a little bit more selective, obviously, in current times, you know, because if you would ask, well, does Ray Allen deserve to have his number retired? Um, you know, he, he, he played a year less than Garnett. He helped him to the championship. He's a Hall of Famer. 
Um, some guys, if you're a Hall of Famer, you get your never retire wherever you went, like yeah. Will Chamberlain and some of these guys who played two or three years in a place and got their number retired because they were a Hall of Famer. Oscar Robertson, Robertson in Milwaukee, in addition to Cincinnati. So it's 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 a it's Those a just debate. Teams desperate to retire numbers though. Huh? Those are some yes. of the teams that are just desperate some to retire. Some of those teams numbers. are. Some of those teams yeah. are. But I also think it in Boston, you can't go back on history. There's no. nothing you can really do. It is what it is. Um I I think I think he had deserves to have his number retired because he changed the entire direction of the franchise. You guys were were around mm -hmm. in the in the early and mid 2000s the losing streaks the oh we're our future is gerald green orion green al jefferson that's our <laughs> those are our guys that are going to you know book it we're going to we're going to the finals with those guys like it just didn't work like the youth movement let's 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 be bad for years and draft young no i was all in on ryan gomes i was all yeah, in they, on got, they got to the conference final in what oh two oh three whatever yeah two, and they lost to a bad like a really bad nets team yeah. like the nets the, those two nets teams that made the finals solid teams but the, the east was bad during the yeah. indiana team that made the final watch of the lakers the philly team that lost 4-1 like like until the pistons kind of came up and then uh Pacers then, had that window. Yeah, the pit the pistons. Yeah, we can talk about that. The brawl. But yeah, great the, doc if anyone hasn't watched it on Netflix. Pistons yet, in 04. And then here comes Shaq, changes everything inside to Miami. The West was ruling things. The East had some really bad teams, like the Knicks of 99 that made the finals, the mm. Pacers, the like you look at the the East from like 98. After the obviously the you know co coincides with some dude retiring in Chicago, yep. <laughs> um, from '98 to '08 until until like the big three, you would think like the best team. But there was only really two really champions, and that was the '06 Heat and the '04 Pistons. So you can say, yeah, they made the conference finals against the the Nets, but the East was terrible back then. It just was it was it was awful. And, and and they were able to obviously rebuild. There were some shifts and power shifts in terms of players and all that. So I think if you remember how bad it was in um, Boston and you remember what Carnett and Allen too did to the franchise and brought the swagger back to the Celtics. And then the rest of it, his, his entire career, He's a Hall of first ballot Hall of Famer. You got it. You got to retire. I agree, and it's it's relative. You know, like you said, you compare to some of the people that that they've already retired. It's not like some of these organizations that have five retired numbers, and you know, Garnett wouldn't fit a certain criteria. He does in Boston, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm.